family drama gets everyone. It's universal. Totally. And today we're going deep, like really deep on a family connection that might just flip your script on Harry and Voldemort. I'll say. It's one thing to see them facing off all that chosen one stuff, even the prophecy. Yeah, yeah. But it goes deeper than that, their connection, I mean. Way deeper. And that's what we're diving into today, right? Mm -hmm. This fan theory that's been blowing up actually started on Reddit. Can you believe it? Someone asking about Harry and Voldemort. Any deeper connections, like beyond the scar, beyond, you know. The whole boy who lived business. Right. But some fans were picking up on something else, some hints, and honestly, they were onto something. Oh, for sure. And this is where Rowling's cleverness really shines, because it's in their family histories where things get really fascinating. It's not just a random plot twist, you know? It makes you think about choice, destiny, what we inherit from our past, all that heavy stuff. The big questions. And let's face it, Voldemort understanding love, that's a whole other deep dive. Huh. Yeah, we'd be here for a while. So, full disclosure, we did our research. Mm. We're talking leaky cauldron forums, that whole essay they posted, even articles on Screen Rant, CBR. Everyone's got an opinion on this. There's a lot to unpack. But the gist is, Harry and Voldemort both descended from the Peveril brothers. And if that name's ringing a bell, it's because... The tale of the three brothers, anyone. Exactly. Deathly Hallows, each brother gets one. Yeah. Talk about pressure, right? Passing those down. Right. So you've got Cadmus Peveril, he gets the Resurrection Stone, Antioch gets the Elder Wand, and then there's Ignotus with the Invisibility Cloak. Now, Voldemort, He's a descendant of Cadmus. Okay, that tracks, right. Obsessed with cheating death. Like it's practically genetic. Like one of those wizarding portraits. Except it's a family trait following you around, staring you down. Exactly. And get this, Harry. He's descended from Ignotus Peveril, the youngest, the one who owned the invisibility cloak. Okay, but hold on. If they're both related to these brothers, doesn't that mean... They're related to each other, okay. distantly, sure, but related nonetheless. And this is where it gets really interesting, because it turns all that pure blood mania on its head. To understand how, we have to talk about Voldemort's mother's side, the Gaunts. Oh, the Gaunts, where to even begin? Fascinating family, if you can call them that. Terrifying, but fascinating. That's one word for it. See, they're descended from both, right? The Peverils and Salazar Slytherin, which, by the way, explains how Voldemort got the Resurrection Stone in the first place. Talk about a family heirloom you don't want to dust off. Right. But here's the kicker, this whole pure blood supremacy thing that Voldemort's so into. Yeah, his own family tree throws a wrench in that one, big time. It's almost laughable, right? Obsessed with blood purity, but your own lineage is basically a giant mixed ancestry ad in the Daily Prophet. Like, you'd think with all that magic they'd have Ancestry.com or something. Seriously. And the irony doesn't stop there. Look at how the Gaunts actually lived. They were so fixated on this bloodline, but they lived in squalor clung to this idea of purity while everything was falling apart around them. Talk about a contrast, right? Because then you have... The Potters. Total 180. <laughs> right. It's like, you want to see why blood purity is a load of dragon dung? Look at the Gaunts, then look at the Potters. A case closed. And here's the thing. The Potters also descended <laughs> from the Peverils. Exactly. It's like you always hear, right, you can choose your friends. But you can't choose your family, magical or not. It gets us all. And that's the difference, though. The Potters got it. Lineage isn't destiny. They chose love. They chose to fight for what's right, even when it was hard. All the things Voldemort saw as weaknesses, they saw as... as strengths. Exactly. And that choice, that break from the cycle, that echoes down to Harry. So is it nature versus nurture then? Like, was Harry destined to be good, or was it the choices he made? Million galleon question, right? And a lot of the stuff we read, that's what they're debating. But you see it in Harry, right? Over and over, he chooses love, even after the Dursleys. Ah, uh, please. The Dursleys were about as nurturing as a blast and its crew. Exactly. But speaking of family, we can't not talk about their fathers, right? Both Harry and Voldemort lost their dads, but in such different ways, really shaped who they became. And that's where that leaky cauldron essay gets it right, that parallel. Tom Riddle, so obsessed with his family, right? Then he finds out his dad was a muggle who bailed on them. Oh, talk about a blow. And the orphanage. Not exactly known for their therapy back then. Right. So that rage, that hatred for muggles, yeah, it's rooted deep. Then there's Harry, grows up thinking his parents died in a car crash, right? Imagine finding out the truth, that your dad, James, he sacrificed himself to protect you, to protect Lily from Voldemort. Two fathers both gone, but for completely opposite reasons. And those choices, 
that sacrifice, that selfishness, it echoes. You can't deny it. It's no coincidence that Harry, who learns about his dad's love, he grows up embracing that same love. So it's not just individual choices, right? It's like this legacy gets passed down, the stories we tell ourselves about our families, about where we came from. And Voldemort, he's so fixated on legacy as power, as mm -hmm. dominance, that he... This is the point entirely. Completely. It's like he's looking at this huge, like, tapestry, right? His family history. But he's only seeing the one thread that makes him think he's powerful. And missing the whole picture. Totally. So busy outrunning death, rewriting his own story, that he doesn't even see the real magic, the yeah. love, the sacrifice. These things that actually matter. And that's the tragedy of it all, isn't it? Voldemort spends his life chasing power, immortality, and for what? Mm. Becomes a shell of a person. It's like Dumbledore said, to the well-organized mind, death is but the next great adventure. But Voldemort, he heard that and said, Nope, not having it. Right. And Harry, through his choices, through that legacy of love, he's able to face even death with courage. Which, wow, it just makes you think, doesn't it? Yeah. About those contrasting legacies, how the choices we make, they echo, you know, generations later. And that's a big theme in Harry Potter, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. It's about recognizing that even with magic, even in a world like that, where you came from, that's not the whole story. We can choose a different path break the cycle <laughs> and it makes that final showdown Harry and Voldemort even more intense hmm. because it's not just good versus evil it's this clash of how they see the world how they see themselves in it and in the end it's Harry's willingness to embrace that love from his family to fight for something bigger than himself that's how he wins this whole conversation I'm telling you it's like we took the Marauders map to their family trees started with one question Ended up down a rabbit hole of secrets, connections, choices that went wrong. Generations of it. And you know what gets me? What if Voldemort had known? The truth about his family, could he have chosen differently? Whoa. Now that's a question, right? Like, something Dumbledore would ponder over a long game of wizard's chess. Right. Actually, I might do that myself. But hey, if there's one thing we've learned today, it's that family. Whether you're a wizard or... Well, us, it matters more than we think. It's those connections we make, the choices we make. That's what really defines who we are. And on that note, I think it's time for us to say mischief managed. Mischief managed. Until next time, everyone, keep exploring those hidden pathways. You never know what you'll find.